Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Holy Gospel regarding the Good Samaritan. Jesus once said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. In other words, those who are sick with sin need Jesus and need his grace and mercy and forgiveness, the great physician. But those who think that they are spiritually well think that they do not need Jesus or the gospel. Jesus also said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In other words, he's come to, to, to call us to repentance, uh, sorrow over sin, and yet also faith in the forgiveness of sins. And those who think that they are spiritually well, that they are righteous, Jesus is going to help them because they do not see their sin. In other words, both the law and the gospel are important in our lives. The law shows us our sin, but the gospel shows us our Savior. The law tells us what to do and not to do, but the gospel tells us what God has done for us in Christ Jesus and still does for us today. Now, the law is preached to everyone, to be sure, even the Christian, because we all have a sinful nature. But the law is especially preached to those who are not sorry for their sin. And that's why Jesus oftentimes preached the law to the Pharisees and to the lawyer in our text. If one does not confess their sin, then the gospel cannot help them. And if you do not take sin seriously, then you will never understand your need for a Savior, or the seriousness of God's love for you in Christ Jesus. Now, the gospel is preached to everyone because Christ died for all. The gospel brings you comfort, you who are repentant and sorry for your sins. The gospel brings you peace, peace in the forgiveness of sins. It relieves troubled consciences. However, the impenitent, those who are not sorry for their sins, we don't give them a false comfort. So we don't say to them, don't worry about your sin. God will just look the other way. He loves you all the time. You don't say that to an impenitent. So both the law and the gospel are important in both teaching and preaching. It's very important that you see your sin and believe in God's grace through faith in Christ. And we will see in our text for today a beautiful example of both law and gospel. Was the lawyer in our text sinful by nature? Yes, he was, because he was a child of Adam and Eve. Did the lawyer in our text yearn for the promised Savior and for the gospel? No. Why? Because he was impenitent. And so what does Jesus do? He preaches the law. First of all, the lawyer, did he commit sin? Yeah, he committed sin. He committed the sin of unbelief because he did not have faith in Jesus, who was God in human flesh. He was he, the promised Savior. So the lawyer asks Jesus, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He doesn't ask this because he's, he's curious about the answer. He, 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 he does this in order to test Jesus. He sees Jesus as some fraud that he was out to, and the lawyer is out to kind of trap Jesus, to test him. He believes that Jesus has failed in what the law demands because Jesus associates himself with tax collectors and Gentiles and so called sinners of the day. Blessed are the eyes of the disciples because they see Jesus. They see him as the son of God. And many prophets and kings desire to see and to hear what the disciples saw and heard, but they did not. Blessed are you because you with the eyes of faith see Jesus as your savior. And blessed are you because you hear the gospel. And many prophets and kings wish to see and hear what you hear. Now the lawyer, on the other hand, he saw Jesus with his eyes, but he is not blessed because he refuses to believe that Jesus is the promised Savior. 
Again, he committed the sin of unbelief. Second, the lawyer committed the sin of trying to justify himself. He thought that eternal life was gained by winning God's favor by works. He thought that he loved God with all his heart, soul, and mind. But he did not love God because he did not have faith in Jesus. And not having faith in Jesus, he did not love God. And by not, loving Je by not having faith in Jesus, he also did not love Jesus, his neighbor. And so he broke both tables of the law, but he did not realize that. He was a little troubled by loving the neighbor. <clears throat> Should he love the Gentile who is not circumcised? Should he only love the Jew who follows the law? So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? He was hoping that Jesus would <clears throat> exclude certain people from being the neighbor, such as the sinners, the Gentiles, the Samaritans, and the tax collectors, and that love toward the neighbor would include only those who are pure and holy. And the lawyer was hoping that Jesus would give a list of people who are excluded from being loved. You see, the lawyer was looking for a loophole in the law. How far can I go and not break the law? You do the same thing. You look for loopholes and exceptions in the law in order to justify yourself. You may not have killed anybody, but you've broken the fifth commandment when you've had anger or hatred in your heart toward others. You may not have committed adultery, but you've broken the sixth commandment when you've had lust in your eye or looked at those bad websites or magazines. You perhaps maybe not have broken the, uh, you've perhaps maybe not stolen something, but you've broken the seventh commandment, uh, the, particularly the co commandment of coveting when you've desired, had a sinful desire for what people have or own. You are no different than a lawyer. You, since you too have the old Adam in you, then there is unbelief in your heart as well, and there is a part of you that seeks to justify yourself before God. Oh no, officer, everybody else was speeding, so I'm justified too as well. Oh, uh, he hit me first, so I'm justified in hitting him. You see, we try to justify ourselves as well. The lawyer needs the law so that he will see his sin, repent and seek mercy from Jesus alone. And you need the law preached to you for the very same reason. So when the lawyer asks the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus doesn't give him a gospel answer. Jesus doesn't say, well, listen, friend, I am your savior who will gain eternal life for you and give and give it to you freely as a gracious gift. Follow me and you will have eternal life. Jesus doesn't say this because it will do no good. He doesn't believe that Jesus is a savior anyways. So rather, the parable was given so that the lawyer will see the law, that the law cannot save him, that he has failed to have compassion and mercy on everyone, and that the only way of salvation is through the compassion and mercy of God, who is a neighbor to all sinful mankind. So the gospel is for those who have been convicted by God's law. The man was self-righteous, and he hadn't yet felt the accusation of God's law. And so also for you. The law is good. The law reveals God's will for us. We memorize the Ten Commandments and their meanings. The law is good. It teaches us what is healthy and safe. Safe. But the law cannot help you eternally. It cannot give you the forgiveness of sins or eternal life. The law condemns everyone. The law confines everyone under sin as wounded and naked before God as our Old Testament re our epistle lesson uh, told us. So the priest and Levite in our gospel for today is a picture of the law. They represent the law and they follow the letter of the law rather than showing mercy to the one who was in need. We've all walked in the shoes of the priest and the Levite. We've turned our heads so as not to, to see the need of our neighbor. 
and we've tried to avoid situations which demand our help. We see someone in need and we say, well, I can't afford it, I just don't have time. If loving God and our neighbor perfectly is a way to eternal life, then we are all doomed. And if eternal life depends on our performance of the law, then none of us here will measure up. Because of our sin, we are like the man in our parable who is half dead. Satan stripped us of our righteousness there in the Garden of Eden, leaving us naked in sin. Satan has wounded us with death, and he's left us unable to find our way back to the fold. Satan has left us spiritually blind, dead, an enemy of God. We need a good Samaritan. We need a Savior from sin. And that's why Jesus came down from heaven in order to do what we cannot do, in order to provide salvation for us and to open heaven for us. He came to be our neighbor in the flesh and blood like us. And Jesus had mercy upon the hurting. And so he gave sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf, and he raised the dead. And when the repentant woman came to him, he forgave her all her sins. Jesus fulfilled the law in our place. He truly loved his Father in heaven, and he also loved his neighbor, even those who hated him. Jesus also died upon the cross in our place. He was the perfect priest, offering the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And three days later, he rose from the dead, and he lives forevermore. Dearly beloved in the Lord, Jesus came to you as a lost lamb. He picked you up. You were stripped of your righteousness, beaten and wounded in transgressions and sins, but he has had compassion on you. He covered you with his robe of righteousness there in the waters of holy baptism. He washed you of all your sins. He brought you to the church. Your sins are pardoned and forgiven because of Christ's death and his resurrection. You hear God's absolving word that removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. You hear the gospel preached. Blessed are you for your eyes of faith see Jesus as your savior. Blessed are you because your hearts hear the life-giving words of our Lord. Blessed are you when you partake of the Lord's supper here, the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all your sins. Jesus has given you the riches of his grace. He takes care of you. And if there's ever one who was truly neighbor to you, it was Jesus who laid down his life for you in order to save you. You do not justify yourself. Rather, you are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone and not by works. And now loving your neighbor is done freely. It flows naturally from the heart of faith. You love others because God loves you in Christ Jesus. You forgive others because you are forgiven by God in Christ Jesus. And you show mercy to others because God shows mercy to you. And this flows freely from your heart into the neighbor. And you don't love the neighbor in order to earn heaven. Your goodness is done for the neighbor because of the goodness that God has done for you in Christ Jesus. After we will, we will receive the Lord's Supper, we will rightly pray that the body and blood of Jesus would not only strengthen us with faith toward God, but also fervent love toward the neighbor. Does God want us to love the neighbor? Yes freely because of the gospel. And if we are ever in need, we pray that God would send a good Samaritan or someone to help us. Who is our neighbor? It is anyone who needs help, anyone who the Lord has put in our path, especially family and those within the church. What must I do to inherit eternal life? We do nothing. Christ has done it all. Heaven is not earned by works. Rather, heaven is an inheritance, a free gift through faith in Christ. Because of Christ's atoning death upon the cross, God has given you the inheritance of eternal life.
By grace you have been saved through faith in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and a life everlasting. Amen.